T-Mobile has announced the details of its upcoming satellite direct-to-cellular offering in partnership with Starlink. And they are opening the beta for free to customers, not just T-Mobile customers, but even AT&T and Verizon and other customers as well to start trying this service out today. We've got the details. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you an update on getting satellite service from space directly to your phone. Now we've been tracking a lot of the different technologies and providers and ways that carriers are trying to bring satellite service directly to phones. And one of the most exciting is the partnership between T-Mobile and Starlink, which has been in the works since 2022 is when we first covered it. And they at the time thought they'd be entering beta by late 2023. Well, they didn't quite meet that deadline in typical SpaceX fashion, but also in typical SpaceX fashion, it is actually coming to pass. And just a few weeks ago, they've started signing up T-Mobile customers for this beta service, being able to get text messages on your phone from space, from Starlink satellites in space, um, as long as you have a clear view of the sky, regardless of whether you have cellular coverage or not. But the details were not really there of like, well, how much would this cost once the beta was over and what are the actual capabilities going to be? And well, T-Mobile with a Super Bowl ad this past weekend revealed a whole lot more. And in the surprise twist, they're actually inviting customers from Verizon, AT&T and other carriers to join in the beta testing, not just T-Mobile customers, giving them free access to the satellite network until it goes live. Now, when is it going live and when does commercial service start and how much will it cost? The date is July. That is the new information. So July is when the service is rolling out out of beta. And when it rolls out, T-Mobile has now revealed the pricing. It's going to be free and included if you've got a premium plan with T-Mobile. So if you've got T-Mobile's um, Go 5G Next is their premium plan. Their Go 5G Next business plan will also include it. And their um, plans for uh, uh, first responders and other government employees at premium level plans will get satellite service for free. If you do not have a top tier expensive T-Mobile voice plan, you can add on T-Mobile Starlink direct to sell capabilities for $15 a month to on top of your plan. So that is the addition to add that to your plan. Or if you happen to actually sign up for the beta in February, you're locking in an early um, supporters discount of just $10 a month if you are a T-Mobile customer. Now, as far as this beta goes, the big surprise twist in the Super Bowl ad that T-Mobile ran was that they're inviting customers from AT&T and Verizon and any other carrier with a compatible phone to sign up for the beta as well and potentially get service between now and July for free. And then, well, we'll jump to the pricing is once that free period is over, then it would be $20 a month if you've got a line that with a carrier other than T-Mobile to keep that service active. And well, so what is this service gonna give you? Is this going to be making phone calls, doing text messaging, doing internet, doing data, doing all the normal cell phone things wherever you happen to be? And that is the catch, that is the big misconception that so many people have as they think that the Starlink satellites are gonna be beaming down the same sort of performance and signal that is going to Starlink dishes. And that is actually not the case. This is not the Starlink signal. This is not Starlink satellite broadband. This service that is being rolled out is a secondary payload on a subset of Starlink satellites. Right now about 400 of them have this additional direct to cellular payload that is broadcasting not a Starlink satellite broadband signal, but basically a 4G signal um, on LTE band 26 that Starlink is working with T-Mobile to basically layer coverage on top of to give cell coverage from space to regular phones. That's why it works with regular phones. You don't need special models with special antennas. It's just a cellular signal from space. And it's a very weak cellular signal. And it is a very narrow bandwidth cellular signal. The, 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 in the United States, we've only authorized five megahertz of spectrum. So this is very, very tiny amount of spectrum being broadcast down and shared amongst a huge audience of people underneath where any given satellite is passing overhead. So 
That is why T-Mobile and Starlink are only initially planning to offer text messaging service. You're not going to be out in the middle of nowhere sending video clips to friends or surfing the internet or doing anything else. Their initial ambitions are just text messaging, just SMS text messaging, not even um, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or iMessage or anything like that. Just basic text messaging is what is the initial plan. Now, this is the initial plan. There's a lot more satellites still to deploy into the network and a lot more capacity that will be added. So eventually they will start having um, picture messaging and some voice calling support and maybe some slow speed data support. But this type of technology, this direct to cell technology is not meant to replace cell towers. It's not meant to compete with cell towers. It's not meant to compete with Starlink broadband. This is just a supplemental layer of extra data that just happens to work where Ever you happen to be. So this content is made possible by our premium members over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We strive to create unbiased content for our audience. We are not sponsored. We're not driven by affiliate sales and we don't sell stuff. We are here to provide unbiased content and for that we are funded by our members and our members get a lot of additional perks for their support. So please, if mobile internet is an important part of your lifestyle, consider supporting us. So that is actually pretty cool. I mean, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you're having an emergency, a text message can make all the difference in the world and it will just keep getting better from here. So it's really cool to see this actually starting to happen and it is rolling out as of July. Now, the way that this is going to work for, if you don't happen to be a T-Mobile customer and you're one of these other carriers, you'll be signing up as basically getting a second line on your phone. And so you're the phones that for other carriers to be able to support this, you have to have an unlocked phone, so can't be locked to your primary carrier, and it has to have an eSIM compatible uh, model so that T-Mobile can send you an eSIM, and that basically becomes a second line on your phone that will be your text messaging and eventually your satellite data line for that ongoing $20 a month or free during this beta period. Um, now, speaking of phones, what phones are compatible? I said you don't need a new modern phone. This is actually 4G technology coming from space. This is using an old frequency band that is um, uh, already supported by pretty much every cellular device. But to be able to be licensed to broadcast to space and, and to be able to communicate with the satellites, the phones need to have a little bit of a software update. So even though old, almost any existing phone technically should be able to be compatible with this network, um, T-Mobile is only committing to support most phones that were manufactured in the past four years. And they've put up, an up a list there. They keep expanding of the ones that have already had the software updates and had the uh, certifications pushed to them. Right now, that includes um, iPhone 14 and newer, Samsung Galaxy S21 and newer, and a bunch of other phones. So you can check out the list that they've published. They'll probably keep adding to that. What they're probably not going to add and support anytime soon are data only devices like hotspots, tablets, routers, or anything like that. Because, well, as we've talked about right now, particularly at the start, this is very, very limited capacity network. They're not going to want to encourage heavy data type devices to be connected to it. Um, so expect this to be limited to phones only and models more than um, in, made in the last four years. Now, there are a few other gotchas you got to know about what T-Mobile Starlink is doing is some people think, hey, this will work. I'll be able to take my T-Mobile plan and go anywhere in the world and get connected. And well, that is not the case. The way Starlink direct to cellular works is they're using cellular spectrum and they therefore require a terrestrial carrier partner that they basically need to borrow and coordinate that spectrum with. So in any given territory, Starlink can only offer direct to cellular coverage if they have a carrier partner on the ground who is working with them and basically allowing them to roam onto their frequencies. In the USA, that partner is T-Mobile and SpaceX is signing up partners around the world to offer similar services. And the part of the, the agreement is that they will offer reciprocal roaming to each other. So uh, they have a partner in Canada, they have a partner in New Zealand, they have a partner in Switzerland, they have a partner in Ukraine and other places where they'll be signing up uh, countries to offer this service. And so you're, be able to travel and still have satellite service when you go to those countries. But if you're in a country that hasn't signed up yet, even though the s satellites are overhead, 
direct to cellular will not work. So that is an important consideration. You're not getting true global coverage yet. Now, one thing that to consider though is what about out in the ocean where there's not a local incumbent who owns the airwaves already? Will um, Starlink and T-Mobile be able to offer open ocean coverage with this sort of thing? Technically, they should be able to do that, but they have not talked about it at all and they have not tried to file for the spectrum rights or to indicate that they're planning this. But I would not be surprised if at some point they do come up with a ways that this will continue to work in open ocean. But for right now, with this launch, particularly with this beta launch, count on it working inside the United States where T-Mobile has coverage and then eventually rolling out to some of these other countries where SpaceX is working on similar initiatives. Uh, like my shirt? We've gotten so many comments on our mobile and connected shirt that we have made them available to you. Go over to rvmobileinternet.com slash shirt. You'll go to our bonfire store where you can order your own shirt as well in a variety of colors and styles. It's a great way to help support our content here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, even if you don't want to become a member. Another catch is about trying this out. Now, there's nothing, you've got nothing to lose to sign up for the beta. If you're a T-Mobile customer or if you're a customer with any other carrier, you can go to the T-Mobile website, put in your email address and phone number, and basically agree to be marketed to. And when there is space in the beta, which no guarantee how long that'll take, they will send you instructions on how to activate that eSIM and how to turn on service and start getting service from space. But particularly if you're on another carrier, this might be fun to experiment with, but the way this, this is being set up is it's a second line. So text messages, you'll have a secondary phone number that will be your satellite phone number unless T-Mobile uh, works out some sort of forwarding agreement, forwarding system to keep your text messages that you normally be doing with another carrier coming down to your phone via this secondary line. They might work something out by the time the beta finishes, but don't necessarily count on that. That could make things a little bit awkward for using this service if you have AT&T or Verizon or some other carrier as your primary. I think the main reason T-Mobile is offering this is just to try and do a lot of marketing and get a lot of people to sign up so that they're on their email list and they can try to encourage them, oh, just switch to T-Mobile completely. Don't try and do this hybrid primary phone service with one carrier, satellite phone service with T-Mobile. Oh. Speaking of the other carriers, T-Mobile is not the only company that is looking to enable basic messaging from space in particular. All the carriers have similar initiatives that they are working on. And well, some of the device manufacturers like Apple has been out for years with their own satellite direct messaging service from certain iPhone models and um, still offering that capability for free. So even though T-Mobile and Starlink have a lead in putting a lot of satellites up there and they're probably going to be very aggressive in expanding their beta and expanding their capabilities. Um, Verizon and AT&T are both investing in a company called ASD Space Mobile that is launching similar very very capable satellites. They'll be offering similar features in the future and there's a lot more in the works. So the exciting thing is we are entering an era where satellite and cellular are kind of coordinating becoming one and dead zones really are going to become a thing of the past. As long as you've got an open view of the sky, you'll be able to stay connected. It might just be messaging at first, but eventually it'll be pretty, pretty impressive what you'll be able to do wherever you go. It won't ever be the same sort of 5G super fast broadband you get in a direct cell tower covered area or the same sort of speeds you get with a full size Starlink system. But it is pretty exciting that we're entering a future where you'd be able to carry satellite connectivity in your pocket. So that's the latest. And if you want to get signed up for the beta, put your name out there and uh, start trying this out. Let us know how well it works for you and come join us over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.